Hey guys, I want to apologize for not having a solo episode this week. Um, just been dealing with some stuff and have uh, doing some work too. So just been a lot of different things on the plate at this moment. Um, but I love you guys and I'm so fortunate to have today's guest in. Um, this guy has been entertaining humans and animals even. I mean, heck, the guy's been an animal and even and entertained humans as an animal. He's done it in animation, um, real life, flesh and bone, verbal, audio, visual. This guy done it all. He's done it for decades now. Um, you, you know him probably most recently from America's Got Talent. I know him at one point. He was my boss. And, uh, and I'm so grateful to have uh, the hilarious, the timeless comedian, Mr. Howie Mandel. Yeah, I just wonder, like, because I remember when I was a kid, sometimes if we get, if we did something bad, then um, we would come downstairs. We would try to get my mom to let us watch TV. That was the right. big thing. And it was you're not allowed to watch TV as a kid. No, not if I was if we were bad. That's yeah. what they held from you, is TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they held that TV, and it was the main. Th you know, we had I think this TV was probably it was a pretty tiny TV, maybe 14 inches. You know, it was one of those size doesn't matter. But you had to get, yeah, you had to get close to it. You know, you had to get real close. So, right. So anyway, um, we had to, we'd come down and like perform for my mom so that she would let us. Um, you have to dance for TV time. Yeah. And that's, so that's like a, like Vaughn's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like Vaughn's Got Talent. You know, it was like the right. Vaughn. And instead of a million dollars or a show in Vegas, you just get to watch a show on a 14 inch <laughs> yeah, black yeah, and white TV. Yeah. And it was usually like, uh, yeah, a lot of times it was, um, you know, Bob Saget's show with the. Uh, Full House? Full House or. Um, you would dance to watch Full House? Yeah. When I look back on it, I think I should have just, you know, I should have danced for something better. Sometimes it was honestly the one with John Walsh. The missing pe you know where the people go. Yeah, the most want America's yeah. uh, most wanted, yeah. right? Which actually actually ended up catching people. Yeah, that TV show. Oh yeah, they I did. still watch that. They, I like that, and I like cops. I liked all those. The mic's open, King. Um, sorry, it's okay. Is somebody was that somebody breathing? Yeah, just Nick. So I just was gonna try to get him to close that. Was mic. that Nick? You breathing? Yeah, I had the speaker way too loud in there. I'm my but voice why, is probably way too loud. No, it's not even your voice. It's just that I was starting, we were I talking. No, but I was talking, and then yeah. I heard heavy breathing, and I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, your fan base for this podcast really enjoys. <laughs> like, this is, I've been on a lot of podcasts, but I've never heard the enjoyment of the audience <laughs> oh, coming close. through. You know, it's just like, <sighs> 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 thanks, Nick. They're separate audio tracks. Sometimes they remove it. Sometimes it's an extra layer. I don't know. Yeah, it's not. Oh, yeah. you don't know. That it's, so like this may have been removed in post production before it went out. Yeah, by so me. So then I come off like an asshole talking about breathing that only I heard. But now I'm going to keep it in. Well, no. If you keep it out, then you can cut out this part too. But well, this is hilarious. Yeah, I think at this point no, I don't know he does. It, he got a free. He got a group on for a Lamaz course too that he's using as like kind of a. To meet women. I love that. That's a great way to meet women. Yeah. And you're not seeing them at their at their best. Have you ever been with a a pregnant woman, Theo? I don't know. Not No, the... you would know. You wouldn't know. Oh, then no. No, I haven't been with like somebody that's passed like probably a week or two. Oh, okay. I don't think anyway. Not in my lifetime. I have. But it was my wife. Oh, okay. But okay. I'm talking about like sex in the third trimester is kind no. of oh my god. What you do is you don't want to hurt the baby, right? So you don't want to lie on top, and you don't want her to lie on top of you. What we used to do is just butter the table, mm -hmm. and then lie her on the table, and I just grab the ankles and then just slide her back and forth, and that way there's no pressure on her abdomen. Oh, or you know, that's an Emeril Lagasse method too. I feel like I feel like he. 
that has like a lot of pow. Yeah, is that what he says? I Bang, pow. bam, I think bam, it's bam. Right, I I forgot. Thank you, bam. Yeah. What did you turn on now, Nick? That's there's a humming noise. That's the elevator. That's the elevator. Yeah, that's just a rent issue. It's just why we pay a low rent. Do the people at, at home hear the hear that? There's a lot of background noises that I'm hearing and a lot going on in here. Um, <laughs> the people, well, a lot of it is the part of the elevator. I don't mind is it's a lot of senior citizens going to get checked out. There's, is this a medical building we're in? Yes, medical. Are building. you fucking kidding no, me? I'm not, I'm not what is this? This is not like an infectious disease center. No, no, it's not. Like, what no. kind of doctor are we right next to? Lots of mental health. Lots of oh, then that's okay. Lots yeah. of lots of dads coming alone and women coming with kids, and then they meet and go to meetings. Oh, mediators. Uh, yeah, it's a the divorce. Oh. Well, that's different than a medical building. There was divorce, and there was pornography for a bit down the hall. You I, had pornography down the hall. We didn't, but somebody did. With Nick's breathing, he could almost have it. <laughs> um, but you could hear some. Some you could hear. I couldn't tell if it was argue like contractual arguments through the wall or what it was, you know. But you could hear a bit of tussling kind of when i i don't know that people know this but i i did years ago i i did the uh, movie gremlins and i'm gizmo you know, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Gizmo. yeah it's gizmo yeah but you know had to i had to audition to get that and i auditioned in a building in burbank not unlike this building here and i didn't know that it, it was a medical building and the casting person had rented an office in the medical building so i was going for the audition for gremlins and it wasn't just me to play gizmo is all that all the all that but as i went up the stairs all i heard is a woman's voice going oh 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 that's all i heard and i thought oh she's gonna get the part yeah. <laughs> and then i uh it was so it was right next to an OBGYN, some gynecologist and she was having a procedure i assume she was having a procedure yeah maybe she wasn't maybe she's just a complainer sitting in the waiting room could, yeah yelling ow yeah but uh and then i i got the part i went into the wrong office i went into the gynecology <laughs> no i did yeah. but then they said no next door because i was the only guy i went you're going i can beat that she's going ow and i'm going come my ow come my ow did you uh did you practice that voice before you went or did you kind of just go on the fly? No, I didn't practice. That's the only voice I do. You know, people I think we talked about that before. Mm -hmm. I do. I was it, it was part of my act. I was 11 years old and I was at a birthday party and I was choking on a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. And you know when it goes halfway down your throat and then you can't dislodge it. I think there was something in the and you know when something's half a little so I was going, help me, help me, help me, help me. And they were doing that. They were laughing. I'm saying, help me, and you're laughing. Everybody at the party was laughing. I'm going, I can't breathe. There's something halfway down my throat. Please help me. And and they were laughing. Now, that sounds like what I heard through the wall with the pornography group, actually, that exact quote. Really? <laughs> That exact. Help me. There's something halfway down my throat. And then, yeah, and I then I, I dislodged it, and and uh, but I, when I went home, my memory was the trauma of almost choking and dying. But more importantly, what stood over that was everybody at the party was looking at me and laughing at me, and I thought, oh my god, if I could just bring myself this close to death yeah. each and every <laughs> night, I could be an entertainer. I could be in show business. I could. So I I practiced without my uh, without cake. So, you know, you can do it. It's just like you take the nipple of a balloon. You know when you blow up a balloon and you stretch a balloon? And mm -hmm. you go, so that's not my voice. I'm not I'm not talking like... No, it's not doing that. If you close your... Can you, can you try it? That's our... This is a really bad ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good. The weird thing is there's some Star Trek fan out there probably getting erect right now. <laughs> yeah. So I, I now I, I, I did that voice and that became part of my act. And then uh, I did, I got a job on a show called Muppet Babies. Oh, and yeah. And I'm, I'm Skeeter. I'm Skeeter. I'm a, oh, Skeeter. Skeeter is that. Yeah, you know, is Skeeter's Scoot kind of the ones he's he yeah he's more he's multi gender he's everything kind of. Oh, what is his pronoun? Oh, I think his pronouns is just everything. I'll go mas, you know. It's like everything in Spanish. I think wouldn't Skeeter didn't have a gender, did he? I I don't know. Yeah. So that was that that was <laughs> <Yeah>. the voice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I am. My pronoun is everything.
everybody. There you go. I'll yeah, like okay. Skeeter. So uh, that was Skeeter. And then a couple of years later, I got Bobby's World. And I yeah. decided to use the Skeeter voice. So I did this. So this is Skeeter. This is Bobby. Yeah. And then years later, when I saw my gynecologist, I got uh, uh, Gizmo and I did. <laughs> so they're all the same. A whole array of voices. I did other voices on the uh, on Muppet Babies. Yeah. I was also Bunsen Honeydew. Oh, I don't you remember, remember that. Will you bring up Bunsen, please? Bunsen Honeydew, if you don't listen to me, I'll make your sister disappear. Dang. It was that, and I was an uh, animal. Go bye bye. Oh, that's cool, bro. Go bye bye. And then I, 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 I was busy and I was on the road. And then uh, who took over for me on that? I think it was Dave Coulier. You guys almost look the same now. That's it does look like part. me. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Bunsen Honeydew looks exactly like me. Oh shit. You, that is so fucking great. I never. You might I, have to rebirth. You might. Have I to gotta do. do yeah. Oh my god, it's me. Look at me. How did it, it saw the future? The puppet is designed. You got to see Bunsen Honey, dude. They could see this. They're watching this on YouTube, right? Yeah. Art imitates life, man. That's the Oh, facts, my God. Bro. I didn't know. Holy. It's yeah. like my new headshot. There you are. Yeah, that's that is going to be my new headshot. Rich is in there. Richard works with me. We got to just give out Bunsen Honey, dude. Pictures. I love that. Oh, my God. Look at all of them. What are you getting? What is all that? And, and there's Google. merchandise. Oh, that's Google. Let me just look where you went to the beach. So you can see them tanned up a little bit there. In some of those, yeah. Oh look my at him. God, I was a good-looking. I had no idea <laughs> yeah. that I was voicing my own future. And that's me. Oh, if you yeah. don't listen to me, my sister. Well, I think that's not Baby Bunsen. Uh, was there a Baby Bunsen? It's Muppet Go Muppet Babies uh. Bunsen Honeydew. That's the regular um, Bunsen Honeydew. I was a Muppet Baby. There I am. Oh. <laughs> Set. <laughs> so even even more, yeah. even more like me. <laughs> and there he is with an eight ball too. And that right. was obviously. And look at the glasses. I have my a... own <laughs> an eight ball. You're going through a tough time. I bro. am. You know, we talked about it before we went on the air. Oh, Mental health. I've been dealing with it from the beginning. And look, there's mentioning. There's my new glass line. Yeah. <laughs> I had. He was. You know, I, I got into the glasses business. Did now. you eyeless? Just people are going totally eyeless now. Well, that's why he needs glasses. He has no, oh, eyes. no eyes. He only uses those for... I, I, I've never seen somebody wear glasses without actual eyeballs. <laughs> Until you, bro, as a baby. That's me. That's who you were. Well, because I didn't want to be called four eyes. I wanted to be called no eyes. No eyes. I like that. Yeah, but uh, this is... Uh, I started uh, also predicting the future. So I'm doing that character. I had no idea that one day I would shave my head. There is one hair on there, isn't there? At the top. Is there one hair? Mm -hmm. There seems to be like oh, a little... Yes. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you pull that, it undoes my belly button. Oh. <laughs> yes. And then uh, and then I didn't know I'd have my own line of glasses. I had my own line of glasses. What? That'd be so funny if you pull that and your belly button just came on time. Haven't you ever done that? Have you ever uh, cleaned the lint? Like oh, uh, yeah. there's, I get a lot of lint in my belly button, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes when I start pulling the lint out, mm -hmm. I unravel my underpants. Oh, that's insane, man. What? You've never done that? <laughs> No, I never had. I mean, I've had. What happens to me is I'll wear um, like a blue socks and then I'll just, my whole foot will be blue for. I thought you, know. you were going. I thought I wear blue socks and then my belly button's filled with all this blue lint. And I was thinking, how does that even. Oh, no, I didn't even help your joke. I should have, man. No, you're not helping a joke. I'm just, I was, I was, I thought it was going a different place than it was going. But yeah, sometimes with a blue sock, you have blue lint. Yeah. And it gets all in between my toes. And somehow I'll wear like a sweater or something. Yeah. And then my belly button looks like it has like a kind of an art project going on. It's amazing what, like the amount of stuff that, well, I can, I can speak for you, but for myself, the amount of carry-on that I can yeah. bring on to any <laughs> flight with just my belly button. It's not even a joke. There's just been so, and then this is the other thing. I'm a little bit of a hoarder. Mm -hmm. So like I'll pick it out, but I don't yeah. throw it away. Yeah. So my side table beside my bed is filled with about three years worth of stuff that I've picked out of my belly button. Oh, you're halfway to a mitten, dude. You should do a mitten. You should do like a locks for lust kind of, but make it like a make something, you know, somebody who has cold hands or something. It's like one of, you know, Howie Mandel's lint button mittens, you know? I love that idea. It's pretty. A, it is a good idea, and you just come up with this, like yeah. with uh, off the top of your head. Yeah, I almost wish that I hadn't told you that idea. <laughs> you know, I had a weird <laughs> dream last is. night when I was going to be on. I did. I had a dream last night that I was attacked. I don't know what I was attacked by. Three different 
hamsters, gerbils, and guinea pigs. Oh, dude. Well, and that's definitely that's a warning sign right there. And then no, I, did, I sent those through my no, subconscious. No, you did because yeah. when I think of you, I, I, I went to bed thinking, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be on Theo's show, and that's the last memory I have before I fell asleep. And then that ground game, baby, that small ground game. You know, a lot of that market went to Russia. Do you know that? But the hamster, a lot of hamster gerbils, g pigs. Will you look them up, maybe Nick? The Roborovskis. The Robor. It's a family business. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know if it is or not. It okay. became a family business, the hamster business. But the Roborovskis, a lot of that market when Russian I was Russian dwarf hamsters. Oh, when I was young, they were straight American, man. I mean, you got them right here. How do you know the difference between a Russian hamster and an American hamster? Mm, a lot of it's in the width. The I don't want to say the thigh gap, but it's like the width of their legs, how far apart they are from. How each far other. apart their uh, their legs are? Yeah. So uh, do uh, Russian uh, hamsters have bigger nuts? Uh, I wouldn't say bigger nut. Uh, actually, maybe that's why they have the, that extra space there. What do you mean? The legs are just further apart, but nothing yeah. is filling it more? It's just more space? The legs are a little bit further apart. Now, if you get those Roborovskis or those white, a lot of the dwarf hamster businesses come out of Russia. They're over there in basements. They're dark art, and brother. They're doing it all. You know, I'm surprised. Well, that's some a Syrian. That's a Syrian hamster. Oh, it is? No, the, the left is an American hamster. The right is a Roborovsky Russian hamster. Go. See the Roborovsky's putting his hands together. He's plotting. You see how they're doing, Howie? You know what's weird that you're showing me these things and I'm really into it, but you talk about them like like if I go to a jeweler and I want to buy like a stone or a diamond for my no, this is the Roborovsky crystal <laughs> yeah. and it's got an an incline cut and it's got a clarity of six. You talk about hamsters in the same way as a jeweler talks about diamonds. Oh, these are gems, baby. These are uh so what are they shipping these here illegally? I wouldn't say illegally. I don't think that. I mean, I don't know what they were doing at the time. But when I was young, it was all American hamster. You picked up a hamster, you could hear Leonard Skinner, you know, oh, wow. or you could hear Barbara Streisand. But Dry now, stand? you could hear yeah, Barbara Streisand. Yeah, not Barbara Streisand. You could hear both of them if you wanted. Or is Barbara Streisand a place where you went to go buy Roborovskis? Oh, at the Barbara Streisand? At the Barbara Streisand. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yes. People who need Roborovsky are the luckiest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. You know what's great? I love that you come up with something and then your producer, Nick, has to, like, with a, uh, not even a smile, just a serious look, is searching the web for the Roborovsky dwarf hamster breeding. Look at him. Uh, I mean, but it seems like it's the dwarf hamsters, Roborovskis. They're from Russia. It seems to be like a dark arts, like a like. It, there seems to be something uh, evil, sinister, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at them, man, I remember when I was young, there was a f the smaller hamsters the stores were selling. They were fuller. They had a little bit more life in them. You looked like maybe after school, after after the day at the pet shop, they went home to loving families. You know, they had dinner at a small table. But you look at these Roborovskis, man, it looked like they're doing cigarettes. They're, you know, they're sleeping on stacked, you know, sleeping all on, you know, a lot of groups in one oh, bed. This is horribly sad. We should get, uh, is there somebody like Sarah McLaughlin that could sing a song <laughs> about the Russian hamsters? In the Ooh. small arms of the angels. Yeah, yes. that would be good. And you have all these Russian hamsters just looking really sad. You should yeah. put together a video. That wouldn't be a bad idea. It would. For a dollar a day, yeah, you can less than that. <laughs> How much does it cost to feed a hamster a day? What do hamsters eat? I bet a dime. A lot of them usually eat like a mix. They'll eat like a. Uh, you want to bring it up, Nick? Do you have one? Everything I ask, Nick has the answer to. Yeah, bring up that ham food mix, Daddy. Do you do you own a hamster now? I don't have any right now, man. The last thing I had was two big G pigs, baby. Uh, what is the difference between a guinea pig and a hamster? The difference between a guinea pig and a hamster, most of all, is size. Between their legs? No, I think overall. Oh, that's I mean, the Russian def versus the American. Yeah, that's Russian versus American is definitely, right. it's a it's a kind of a, you got a hardier kind of a, what is it called, the bottom of a car? Chassis? Yeah. Yeah. You got a, you got a wider chassis on there. Is that there. what they're referred to in the hamster world or the G world? Or the, what, what's the gerbil? Yeah, ger gerbil or gerbil, some people call him. That Isn't gerbil a Nazi? Wasn't he one of the... <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah gerbil, General Gerbil was a, <laughs> a Nazi. You're asking... I think he was. He was... Well, I don't look think... A, they... Look him up. Yeah. And look up <laughs> Gerbil, yeah. Lieutenant Gerbil, Nazi. Gerbil, Nazi. Gerbil, there he is. There he is. Oh, Joseph that's him. Gerbil. 
<laughs> Joseph Gerbil. He was a Nazi. Oh, damn. There he was. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. No, it's a famous. You don't. That's why I've never been able to be uh, comfortable around gerbils. Oh, really? I can see I, that. That's a yeah. little furry, adorable Nazi. And I didn't well, yeah, want him in my if house. If they walk in like this, I'm yeah. sure it's a little dicey. Right. And every time I opened the oven, they would get excited. Oh, oh yeah. One of them start, they start clapping. Yeah. Little, so I had to. Is that bad? <laughs> I don't know. Is I mean, that it's, cancel? Look, that's. Material? No, it's. That's I factual. That's okay. That is factual. That's factual. And, you know, we must never forget. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. We must never forget F U R should be a pet shop. I love that. <laughs> wow. Heil Hamster. It's for kosher, kosher pets. I don't know that Gerbil is the kosher pet. What is he known for? I can't read it from here. What is he known for? Uh, he was a politician. He was cl one of Hitler's closest confidants. Oh, he was a minister of propaganda. Yeah. Oh, he's a secret keeper. Yes, he was the minister of propaganda. And he was chancellor for one day of Germany. Ooh, chancellor, chancellor for a day. Mm -hmm. That what sounds like it? a bad game show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chancellor for a day. You will play and you will like it. <laughs> <laughs> wow what is uh what is a game show honestly holly uh, uh honestly Hollywood? honestly howie Wood? howie howie would when you look back what is a game show or even a pilot that you did where you were like you know i don't know if that one if we had it fully baked that one you know oh that's like every two weeks oh. um <laughs> but i come up with something but i've done some really really bad shitty shows have you oh horrible Horrible. I'm always uh, doing uh, shitty shows. In fact, uh, up until uh, the few hits that I've had recently, I think I was more known for the shit than I was for the good. Wow, really? Yeah, I did really bad movies in the 80s. That was my thing. That was my niche. That was my, you know, yeah. I didn't intend on them being, oh, you're, now you're going to put it up my whole, <laughs> look at any of these n names of, of, okay, go go up first. Let's start earlier. Okay. Okay. No. no. Um, where did I come from? Oh, that's not good. Uh, uh, but you got Gremlins early. That's 1984. So that's, yeah, people that, love that. There's the that. Muppet Babies. Yep. Uh, go go earlier, 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 earlier. St. Elsewhere. That was Okay. Th these are pilots that didn't work. I know, but those are the good things. But a lot of these things didn't work. I was on a um, Good Grief on... on uh, and on, what was that? On Fox. People I was are having the a tough owner time. of a uh, of a uh, what's it called? A funeral home. Ooh. I was the owner of a funeral home, and it was ten episodes. There I am. Look at me. Had a good cast, but that was the worst show. Was it? I think it was, and it wasn't fun, and I didn't have a good time, and it kind of stopped my career for a long time. <laughs> Good grief, huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they really were. At least. No, I was at the end of my, you know, I, what year was that? That was probably 1990, right? Yeah, 1990. And then that was the beginning of the drop for me. My career just went into the fucking toilet. I remember you and Rich telling me at a time that you had, t you had thought about kind of hanging it up for a while. No, I was over. In 2005, I was done. You know, I had been, uh, I kind of, I was on St. Elsewhere and I'd done Young Comedian specials. And then, uh, and then uh, around 2004, I wasn't selling hard tickets anymore. I was playing comedy clubs half full and all over the, the country, which is, you know, a grind. It's, it's a grind if they're full, but it's even more of a grind when really nobody's oh, showing yeah. up to see you. And um, I was reading for parts. I was sitting in casting offices, reading for five lines and under. And I, you know, and did you, you know, feel I, embarrassed or dejected at all or no? Not, I mean, were you able to manage like, because that's what I would. You know, Hollywood has so much of like a... It started weighing really hard on me. You know, it, it's really weird. It, Hollywood is it just f fucks you up. It all, you know, it's not a healthy place for the mind. It really is not. Even, and and as well, this is going to sound like a, like I'm a, a you know, like I, I don't give a shit. Not to our audience, it won't. It won't? No. No, but even if you're doing well, and probably, you know, from the outside, the better people think you're doing the harder it becomes mentally. Because like, for example, I'll give you my example. You know, like the, I did a series. I was on a series for six years with Denzel Washington. Saying elsewhere. I was selling out, you know, uh, at the time, you know, I would do two shows at the Woodlands in, in, in Houston and it would be like 10,000 yeah. people would show. And then 2005, you know, they'd say we have, you know, 26 people are at HaHa's ha tonight, you know. 
And then I would do my set and then I'd come in and I'd be sitting in a casting office. You know, six years ago, I was on a series. I was on network TV. Every break, I was doing a movie for every major studio and all the same offers that, you know, people like Tom Hanks and Robin Williams were getting at the time, you know. But you I were in that world. I, in, at that time, you know, when, when Tom Hanks was doing Bachelor Party and stuff, I was doing, you know, Walk Like a Man and Little Monsters and A Fine Mess. And, but by 2005, I was doing shit and then i said i'm gonna quit and uh, i got an offer to do a game show a d deal or no deal which i thought was the worst fucking idea anybody could ever have first of all <laughs> if you think about that you know when it was pitched to me i don't know that people remember before 2005 there weren't a lot of, there weren't any comedians doing talk shows i mean doing game shows the game show was the joke you would act like a game show host on stage if you were doing a parody of something goofy. Okay. Nobody wanted to be the game show host. The last comedian that did a game show host before that was Groucho Marx, who did You Bet Your Life, which Jay Leno is recreating now, and it's going to be in syndication. But before that, no. Um, so when I got asked, I thought, that's the nail in the fucking coffin of my career. And I said, okay. And then they said they showed me what the show was, and it was just an hour of opening up cases. Yeah, just opening up fucking cases. Unboxing. Not, it was it was the original unboxing, really. That's what it was. It was the original unboxing, and then that thing went through the roof and kind of yeah. gave me a career back. What is but what I was saying about the mental health is that you know the more I do, you know, I'm on AGT now, and I'm, which is the number one show of the summer, and I'm on a lot. I can't tell you that uh, a week doesn't go by where you know i have an idea for something and they say no or they're not putting it on or they go we like that idea but we'd like to use someone else mm. and your mind just goes to weird play and it's not only about being accepted but if you've got that kind of weakness inside you getting constantly uh you know, yeah, some form of rejection or that we don't want time. you. Yeah, you're not the right thing. Because I think it goes back to the things in the beginning somewhere in our lives or in our souls that were like, that made us want to be, attract attention to ourselves anyway. Probably. Well, you just, you brought it up at, right at the beginning. You know, if you wanted to dance for your mom so you could watch TV. Yeah. You learned that being good or funny or getting being the center of attention got you something. Right. Whether it got you notoriety or the opportunity to watch TV or to do the things you like, you realize that that, that became your self-worth. And when your self-worth is externally in your mind, the things that you do yeah, and who you think you are or who you think other people think you are, then you're, you're at the mercy of everybody outside uh, of you instead of yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. I mean, it makes if you want to be happy people, you just got to make yourself happy. You can't make anybody else. It, nobody can make you happy. Yeah. Nothing externally, no amount of money, nothing you could do. Can make, you got to make yourself happy. And that's why I will stand alone in a dark room just smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. Dinner time can be a real stress. You know, somebody's fist fighting. Somebody stole your silverware. You know, somebody's smoking up in the back room, huffing out. But with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week and take the pressure off of you. We're all trying to get in shape and eat right. Everybody is. Look at people. They're always trying. Well, Freshly can help. Their delicious meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, real chefs, making it easier to eat better. Ordering is easy. Visit Freshly.com. Choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better-for-you meals like steak, peppercorn, Sausage baked penny, penne, or the chicken pesto bowl. Mm. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners of TPW $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash T-H-E-O. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash Theo for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash Theo. For $40 off your first two orders. I'm here right now to tell you about something special. It's not about outer space or anything like that. What I'm talking about is Mint Mobile. They offer premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. I thought, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all makes sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile eliminates the brook and mortar shops. So you get the direct service in your hand 
Looking for extra savings? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash T-H-E-O. That's mintmobile.com slash Theo. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Theo. <laughs> yeah, man. Sometimes it's weird, man. Yeah, I can tell totally, that's that's like, yeah, my whole life it's like it all somehow depends on what other people think. And I think it's just from some programming probably, you know, when I was a kid. But that's all of us, you know, every piece of media you right. do, every piece of, uh, you know, wherever you, you know, you want to be the funniest guy. You want to be the most interesting person. If you're a young person, you're reading magazines, you want to dress like that. You want to look like that. You're looking at other people's style. You figure I got to get myself fixed up just to walk outside because when you walk into a room, you're self-conscious about how people are seeing you and what they think of you. And it really doesn't matter. Right. But that, those are just words because to me it matters. You yeah. know, I'm on your podcast because it matters. Yeah. Because, you know, I could be at home, but I want to be here. I want to be here. But I also, deep inside of you, and that's why you're, you're here today, you need uh, acceptance of people you don't even know and may never even meet. I and know. that's a weird fucking thing. Like I'm talking to you and who's ever taking this in. I need you to love me. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck you are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't. I'll never see you, yeah. and you'll never see me in person. But please, but please, please, yeah, yeah. fucking love me, yeah. just so I can get through this shit. I know, and it's been hard. This has been a really tough. People joke around because they know me as a germaphobe, and they go, "You called it," and I say, "You know, Howie in Latin <laughs> means told you." But but the thing is that this has been a really fucked up, hard, and continues to be time for us all. You know, and for me, I've just been struggling. I am so fucking medicated right now. Really? Oh, yeah, right now. And I can't sleep uh, without my gummies. Mm. You know, I take a lot of gummies to fall asleep. Those are, uh, now you are doing the THC or you doing the melatonins? THC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you do that? I don't do it, but. No, I know. God, I would let you don't spit. Don't judge me. Oh, I'd let you spit in my mouth to get a hit of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I would definitely do it if I needed a quick nap or something. Yeah. But yeah, well, so is it your first time getting into those? Has that been a good experience? Well, I didn't, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was, I smoked. I didn't, gummies are kind of new to me. Yeah. So, but they came, I started doing gummies during the pandemic just wow. to sleep. And it's just, and then, you know, I haven't been on the road like you. And I've been afraid to be out in in public in front of in front of people. I started working where you at Supernova just because it was outside. Yeah, you know, and it's in a circle you can kind of stay safe from everybody. Right, but it's outside. It doesn't. Oh, that's it, a good point. You know, but it. You know, I I got uh, uncomfortable with going into a club or a building where everybody's just facing you and going ha ha yeah. ha. <laughs> and then so to combat them, I was writing tragedy instead of comedy, so nobody would go. Ha ha ha! Oh. I want to do things that make people even just stop breathing and looking in my direction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's dude, what I've been doing. <laughs> one time, a guy laughed so hard at one of my shows, he came out of the closet, dude, which was insane. He was. You laughed, a guy. To yeah. Gayness? I laughed at. He, he's like, ha, 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 I'm gay, and his friends were like, What? What's going wow. on, Charles? Have another beer, dude. You That's know? funny. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. People used to talk when I started in the business. They would go, "I killed," you know, like you killed the audience. Or, yeah. You know, they were dying laughing. Yeah. But your yours, you just get them to a level where they're just coming out of the closet. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, yeah. What is the? Uh, That's the new thing. I think if you can get somebody to just admit who they really are right there on the spot, you know? Wow, you're changing pronouns. I mean, we are, yeah. That's amazing. They come in as them, and they leave as us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder if they, uh, wouldn't that be a good game show, a pronoun game show maybe, where really? somebody wins a pro, maybe a pronoun they've always wanted. I don't know, I'm trying to marry like, somebody who has a sexual choice or or wants a certain pronoun or wants to be recognized or seen a certain way. I'm trying to marry that with some type of a, competition you know i wonder if that would be one day wow i love that 
com- it's they against them. Yeah. I know my guy is saying <laughs> that Rich is standing in the back. He goes, don't get into this discussion. Okay, we no, no, no. I'm okay. Did I say anything that it will get me canceled? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> I don't think I'd be canceled. My my heart is always in the right place. I don't think I can say anything to get me canceled. I'm I really. I'm accepting of everyone. I respect everyone. I really do. That's true. I really do. You've always been like that. And there's nothing that's... I I don't think anything is odd. I think... Every person is so is such an individual that can't be replicated, and whatever their desires are, and their needs are, and their wants are, and who they like, and what they look at yeah. is no different than anybody who is um, been born. Maybe not as the world sees them from the outside. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't know. think I could say. I'm just trying to not be confused now, <laughs> and I don't want to. And and the fear is I don't want to offend somebody. Yeah. So I always, I'll just, whoever I walk up to, I I called my grandmother the other day and I go, how are they? (laughs) (laughs) And she said, who? And I went, them. Who is this? I said, it's us. (laughs) (laughs) Who's on first, man? That's great, dude. That'd be so good. A new pronoun version of who's on first. I love that. Maybe it's, it's one show and then canceled. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) That's, that's what it is. It was a pilot program that we came up with. But uh, who's on first? They are who? But I always have to watch myself. I don't want to offend. You know, every day I'm talking to people at America's Got Talent. I can't imagine that. And it's I'm I'm so conscious of you know not wanting to offend anybody. Yeah. Not wanting and and I do respect, but uh, you know uh, who they are. So we took a uh, a course at NBC called a uh, what did I take? Now I forget what the name of the course is. It was called a a sensitivity course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, they brought me in for a sensitivity With course. With the electrocution thought, thing or no? I thought they were going to just tickle me in places yeah. <laughs> on, uh, that I've never been tickled before. I'm taking a sensitivity. No, and they talked about how it is perceived when you say things that maybe are not, even, it's not about intent, it's about perception. Does uh, that make sense? Yeah, perception is hard to gauge sometimes until you know, until you get some sort of reaction. Most people usually... If you say something and it's a one-on-one instance, then you can tell if somebody didn't perceive it good. And then, then why, honestly, and then why do you hate? It. Why do you hate the Jews? I mean, I would. That's just my perception. Yeah, that's not. I know that wasn't your intent. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, look, there's definitely so, a couple that ruffle some feathers, but I would not say I would not leave that as an overall statement. Okay, okay, all right. And it's uh, good that we cleared that up <laughs> yeah, and everything you. is moving smoother. Is, is that something that you're going to cut out, Nick? When I say to him. Why he doesn't he doesn't hate Jews? No, no, it's not the Jews. No, uh, it's the no. Let's just yeah, let's just leave <laughs> it there. I mean, yes, I definitely have had a landlord before that's a little dicey. Okay, I will be honest. Is landlord your huh? your your name for Jew? Sorry, land them. Okay, land them. <laughs> whatever, whatever. They, <laughs> land them. Whatever they choose to be. Uh, I did have a. I had a good Jewish joke one time that I wanted to try, but sometimes I well, get... I'll be the judge of that, okay. of whether it's a good Jewish joke. Okay. Get ready for a good Jewish joke. Oh, you'll love this guy. Oh, man, that guy's that guy's so nice. He'll sell you the shirt off his back. Is that good? Is that a, that's that's a it. Jewish joke? Yeah, that's it. For he'll sell you that guy... Instead of he'll, he'll give you the shirt off his back? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even get it. Okay. You know why? Because it was too inside for me. I said, what's the joke? That's something <laughs> okay. I would do. I didn't get it because I'm Jewish. <laughs> but all your non-Jewish uh, listeners and viewers will get it. And then the joke's on the Jew here. <laughs> oh, so what's wrong with selling the shirt off my back? That's that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I. That's not a joke. That's just a part of my life. What's the joke? But now I get the perception is that some people give it. Right. But why would you ever give somebody the shirt off your back? I agree. Especially when you can sell it and walk I away with it. a couple of extra bucks. <laughs> I love that. Right? Now it's a game show suddenly. <laughs> you can walk away with a couple of extra bucks, man. I love it. I don't it. want the shirt off. You know, uh, <laughs> I know. Plus, I bet you I could sell this shirt on your show. Oh, People dude. are watching. Somebody would buy I will sell you. <laughs> Is that my camera right there? Uh, that one. Uh, that one's my camera? I will sell you the shirt off my back. <laughs> now they all they have to do is write I'd buy in. It. Yeah, I think they write in. Yeah, we. Still I don't have money. like you. I don't have merch. 
We still get a lot of mail. Really? No, I'm just going to sell whatever I'm wearing. Oh, the shirt off your back. <laughs> yeah, and then with that money, I could buy a new shirt. Merch is just whatever I'm wearing, whatever I have. You sell a lot of merch, right? We sell we sell a decent amount. We, we don't get overboard. Like some places do a lot of merch, you know? We no do, merch here. We do pretty no well. No merch. Did you ever, what was a unique piece of merch that you sold when you used to do a lot of touring when you were coming up? Because I've sold some really things that I could, yeah, I would sell basically whatever I had. I remember buying another guy's t-shirts one time. It didn't have anything to do with jokes that I had. He was quitting. So I just bought all his shirts. And what so, was the joke on it? It was like about... It was pretty profane. It was like about, um, it was something about Hot Pockets or something. Right. And it had. So, and you sold at the Theo Vaughn concerts, the Dave, uh, Dave Smith's Hot Pocket t-shirts. Yeah, it didn't say Dave Smith, but it, was, it had the Hot Pocket. It had something about Hot Pockets on it. It was like a lot of euphemisms, a lot of like seedy euphemisms you would hear probably in like a back Right now, alley. the only thing I'm selling is my glasses. Really? I'm not selling them. This is at Sea Eyewear. This is a part of a. A collaboration with Seth Rogen, the uh, hilarity for charity. If you buy my glasses, hmm. some of it goes to to that, which is for Alzheimer's. So that's that's the end of my merch. I, I also want to sell. I should. Oh, there you are. There's my partners. Uh, see, I wear. Oh yeah, I, wear I heard about them. I don't wear glasses yet, man. But I would I would be willing to wear glasses. You'd be willing to wear glasses. Oh yeah. Wow. I feel I like it would help you focus. Was there anything you ever sold that was like, because a lot of comedians, when you're first coming up, you're trying to, you know, guys will burn CDs in their hotel room and then take them in a stack on the spindle to the shows. So you know what I them. did? I, well, one time when I was on tour, I took T-shirts out and all I had on the T-shirt was my wife uh, wanted to add an addition onto our house. There was mm -hmm. another room that she wanted to add, like a playroom or, or whatever. And she got the... You know, uh, she had somebody drop the plans and give us an estimate. So I took the plans and the estimate, and that's what I printed on the T-shirt. <laughs> and I sold those shirts until I had enough money to build that room <laughs> and pay that contractor. And I did, and I still have that T-shirt. I should send the picture of you so you can post it on here. I have a picture of that on the wall. And it's just the plans for the room <laughs> and the estimated costs and everything. And as soon as I hit that button, yeah. it's our T-shirt room. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so that's I did that. Idea. I would, my wife, we once set up, you know, there were all those stands on Venice Beach. Mm -hmm. One time, this is before, when I had a lot of time on my hands, we I set up a stand that were just uh, pickles and socks. Oh, really? Just to see people uh, walk by. And I, I did, it's not even a good prank. It's nothing. I just yeah. thought it was hysterical. Alone. You know, I've always said, if I could just make one person laugh, I'm doing my job. It just seems that most of the time that one person is just me, yeah. but it's one, <laughs> yeah. and I've done my job and hit my goal. And I used to sit at the uh, on Venice Beach at a table because there'd be artists selling their art, there'd oh, be yeah. people selling snacks, there would be people selling readings, tarot card readings, and things like that. And then I would have like uh, a jar of pickles and a little stack of socks. Ooh, I like that. And they'd go, and people would walk over and they'd go, "What? What? what what is this? Yeah. And I'd go, well, this is pickles and this is socks. And it, you could buy them separately or together. Really, it's up to you. I'm not going to push that on people. <laughs> they can make their own decisions. So that's the merch. And I still have access to pickles <laughs> and socks if anybody is in the market. I could go for some, I think. I didn't even eat breakfast yet, but... Um, you, How many uh, cans of liquid death have you finished? Not enough to freaking... Not enough to, to do what they say they'll do, dude, which is take you to the grave, baby, you know? <laughs> but that's not a sponsor? It is a sponsor. Liquid they're, Death? Yep, and they're good, man. It's good, clean water. It's from, I want to say, maybe Aspen or Boise. Aspen or Boise. <laughs> wow, they don't really don't care about the read on your show. As far yeah. as, I do a podcast, so I'm just getting into it. I'm doing a podcast with my daughter. You gotta oh, come on. yeah. Will you come on? I'll come on. You definitely come on. Yeah. So we do, me and my daughter, I was freaking out during the... Uh, during the lockdowns mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. So I would spend hours on the phone with my daughter just fucking around doing prank calls to friends and celebrities and challenges and things like that. And my wife once walked in and said, what, what are you doing? And I told her, we're just, she goes, "What the? who's it for? And I go, it's for us. And she said, record it. So that became our podcast. So if you come on my podcast, we'll do prank calls and fuck with people. Do you like prank calls? I know you. we did, uh, we did de deal, deal with it. it. Yeah, I like prank shows. I was so nervous doing deal with it, but I definitely got the hang of it. Oh, I was at a show one time and some lady in the crowd starts yelling 
She's like, we the, I threw the wedding ring. I threw the wedding ring. And I don't know what she's talking about. I'm thinking like, oh, we got to we gotta get this lady out of here. She's like, I threw the wedding ring. And I'm like, at first I think she's talking to some man she's with or something. Like, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Dude. <laughs> so they start literally escorting this lady out the back. And uh, and it, right by the door, she yells out, Howie Mandel. And then it clicked in my head. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That's I where we that. pranked the, the wife that her husband was cheating. She threw that wedding ring. They were just, they had just got married. And for those that don't know, you hosted the show on TBS called Deal With It. And it was how we show. And it was, uh, I, I was a producer on it. And, and the thing about it was we would, you would whisper things, you or a celebrity guest also would whisper things in people's ear. And they had to do, they were challenged yeah. to do these for money levels. So that guy came in, he was sitting there with his wife. Yeah. And you could, you or somebody else came up with the idea of telling his wife that, uh, I don't know, I don't think it was cheating, meeting somebody. Yes, we're meeting somebody here and we sent in a co accomplice. It was like a female or something. Yeah. And that's when the lady lost it. And she's like, I'm, I'm through with this. Yeah, we sent oh, in the, the lady. I don't remember what the joke was. Because the guy had cheated before, I think. The guy had had infidelities, and now when this person showed up at the table, I think immediately it went to that place. So she takes room. off her wedding ring yeah. and threw her ring away <laughs> in the middle. And we're going, no, it's a joke. I remember it when Marlon Wayans was there too. Yeah, it was Marlon Wayans was doing the jokes with you. That is I funny, and she showed up at a, at one of your shows screaming. Yeah, I did. Did you did. let her back in, or you threw huh? her out? You let we her let her. We let her stay in, but I just had no like. It was just the like the strangest little piece of like thing to say that would that I knew what was going on. You know, I threw the you know I threw the wedding ring. I love pranks. There we we are, did a right prank. There. Oh, that's not him. No, that's well. That's, 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 there we go. <laughs> we will not. And we will we're not. So we, don't bring that up. Now we're canceled, bro. <laughs> Nick is canceled. Nick is, we didn't Nick. do it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank God he got us out of that. Oh, 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 he has been skirting oh, oh, oh. the edge Woo. the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick came through in the clutch. Yeah. Oh, Marlon Wayans, man. He looks different than I remember him, Nick. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Unbelievable, huh? <laughs> But um, I was going to say on the podcast, we did a prank call the other day and somebody was getting really mad, really mad. And Rich, like my Nick goes, reveal, reveal, reveal. Tell him it's a joke. Tell him it's you. So I phone back and I go, hey, buddy. He goes, yeah, can I help you? I phoned him back like the 10th the time. He goes, I go, it's Howie Mandel. It's Howie Mandel. And this is a joke. He goes, okay, Howie Mandel. Can I help you? I go, no, I'm just telling you that that was a, it was a prank. He goes, so you don't need any, uh, you know, plumbing equipment or anything? I go, no, I'm just, he goes, then go fuck yourself. So that was my yeah. reveal. It wasn't good for the ego, but it was such a fail for me and my podcast. So yeah. then, but I did one the other day. I know you, you talked, we did one with Bobby Lee. Oh, yeah. This is also a bad one. Uh, Rich was mad at me for this, where I, we called a guy. I know a guy that was dating a girl, finished dating the girl, and the girl was pregnant, and he did not know whether the baby was his oh, or yeah. the next guy she was dating. And we found out it was the next guy she was dating. But I knew that he didn't know yet. Mm -hmm. So we had Bobby Lee call as uh, a doctor from a, a clinic. Yeah, a very we shady clinic, I'm sure. And with her father, I played her father, uh, telling him that uh, the baby, the DNA test came back, the baby is his, and uh, I, as the father of the the mother, I'm going to talk to him about his intentions and put together some uh, wedding arrangements. Oh. And he just he just started crying. <laughs> oh. And I hung up before the reveal. That's why you were mad at me. Right I never. <laughs> so you guys just ruined somebody's day, really. Yeah, I was terrified, like crazy. And then he gets to the, the peak of everything in hell. He goes, I'm sorry. And he hangs up. I go, well, call him back. Let him know. He goes, no, we're not calling him back. Oh, no, because the last time I called back on that other prank, it yeah, was that plumber. Plumbing, yeah. It was the plumber guy who goes, I don't give a fuck your Howie Mandel. I'm not going through that again. We've just been talking about I mental agree. health and our ego. I'm not going to lay it on my ego again. It's not worth it. I think you let God and that man figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really think you do, man. That was, a, that was a right choice. I know. That was a right choice. We have, um, Howie, we got some people sent in different talents.
All right. If it's see. okay, we want to see a couple of them and what you think these are this past weekend, listeners that are fans of you. What do you look for in the beginning when people are in? Is there any energy thing that people can do when they're introducing themselves to you guys? Well, I think that, you know, ultimately you want to say, no. The answer is no, because one of my favorite things that happened on the show, there was a, a, a young singer, Courtney Hadwin, who, uh, you got to see this girl, if it were, you pull her up, Courtney Hadwin audition. And there's this girl, I'm going to show you this, she was 13 at the time, mm. and they said to her, she was coming up next, and they said, no, we're going to bring out an act before her because she's almost sick, you know, from nerves. She's 13 years old, she's from the UK, she's so shy. Ooh. Then at that time, they said, Mel B, you could talk to her, the first one, the audition. Mm -hmm. Watch this girl, she can't talk. I like to be surprised. Watch this. Hi, my lovely. Hi. Welcome Watch. to America's Got Talent. Oh. How are you? Um, a little bit nervous. That's She's a lot nervous. nervous. She got sick before totally the show. understandable. What's your name? Courtney. And how old are you? 13. Oh, 13. Oh, wow. uh, watch. Um, what's your favorite subject in school? Music. What kind of music? I don't know. <laughs> You're gonna, you're you're gonna your sweet. socks are and gonna be knocked I'm off. You're gonna be singing for us. And all, all you have yeah. left is a pickle. Oh, Watch yeah. this. Don't be nervous. I know this is a big stage and there's lots of people here, but you're here for a reason. So go for it and good luck. Thank Watch you. this. This is what I like. I like when I see things I'm not expecting. You've got to be so nervous. I'm nervous for her. That's her yeah. dad. Hopefully it's her dad. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Uh-oh. Dang. Like Chris Robinson from the Black Crows. Kind yeah. Of. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. So fallen. that's a surprise. So when you say, you know, what do you look for when it starts, you know, I don't know. It becomes part of the whole package as far as like just right. to see somebody who's that shy and just becomes a totally different person when they do it. And I'm sensing that that's going to happen right here with the uh, Theo Vaughn crowd. It could. It certainly could. Let, let's see. Let me hey, hear. Henry. Henry. And I'll be both staffing today. He'll be both staffing? Yeah. I hope this brings my family honor. You hope it brings the family honor? Yeah. And they look rich too. Look at that. Look at the legs on that uh, side table. You always know if your son's in the. Oh wow! Whoa! Oh my gosh! Dude, I have a broken AC unit at home right now. I'll get this dude in a heartbeat. <laughs> Where do you learn to do that? That's amazing. Look at that. I don't even know what that is—a bow staff. It's like a giant, uh, like what do you call uh, the twirlies? Uh, baton. Baton. Like. Yeah, basically. Whoa! Wow! They got to be so honored. He, oh, I felt honored at the end, man. I don't understand. You keep this guy. What do you think, Kyrie? When this guy gets out there and does that, does he need to add an element? What, what, what could Henry do here? You think? I think that was good, and I think I'd move him on to the next round. Mm -hmm. He needs to, uh, you know, that was a good audition. But you hope that they ramp up, like the next time you see it. Maybe he has two. I don't even know what that is. Two sticks. Bow staffs. Two bow staffs. He's fully staffed. A bobo yeah. staff. You hope that he has next time. More staffs. Oh, he'll be a staff people. infection like, next time. Oh, my God. Can you get a bow staff infection? I'm sure he can, do. You saw it at the end. It kind of hit his leg, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Can you imagine the guy shows up next time? He can't even move his neck or arms. Because he was just trying. Yeah. It's your fault. It's, <laughs> just, it's your podcast. Yeah, just infected. Wow. Is, so, that, is that the only piece of talent you have on this show? We have a couple more for Let's you, man. Let's have a couple more. That but, was really... Uh, his family should be so honored. Oh, I feel honored. Even Does as he it, think he's... Uh, like that sounded like. Remember uh, the beginning of Kung Fu. Remember the show Kung Fu. Mm -mm. You don't know to grab the pebble from my hand. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Here's another guy, a weightlifter on a skateboard. Donatello from Ninja Turtles had a bow staff. He had a stick, the purple one. Yeah, he was a purple oh, band. The, he had the, the purple bandana. 
Why did they wear those masks and bandana? We we not, like a, a Ninja Turtle without the mask on. Would you not know? Is it like Superman when he takes the glasses off and you don't know it's Clark mm, Kent? A if call. a Ninja Turtle took its bandana mask off, would you go? Wait a minute! Did you see a Ninja Turtle? There was just a Ninja Turtle here a minute ago. You're just a turtle without a mask and a bow staff. Who are you? Yeah, I never thought about that. They didn't really. It didn't really help their hiding. I don't think. No, they didn't need like a lot of. Except amongst other turtles, I think other turtles might have been like, oh, who is that? You're right. It's easier for us to identify turtles and specific turtles than turtles to identify <laughs> themselves. Probably. Because they spend a lot of time alone in their own shells. They're yeah. not cognizant of like minuscule differences yeah. in the turtle. I feel like I look like a turtle. You know, honestly, a shell. Yeah, I could see you shellless, shell-less. kind of out of I'm the shell. Sh- I'm out of a shell like I'm an old. Like a soft shell turtle. I'm a soft shell turtle. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, because I love soft shell crabs. I love that Nick keeps his mic on so you can hear his little giggles. There's tittering. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like some, he turned it up. It's like the lightest tickling. Yeah, it started with breathing and it ends with a like a titter. <laughs> <laughs> the zebra compares car and home insurance quotes right there, all in one locale. That beautiful little striped African creature. Hmm. And it's all for free. The Zebra saves shoppers an average of $922 on home and car insurance combined. Yep. Get all the facts in one place. Get things crystal clear. Start comparing quotes for free today by visiting thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. That's thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. Support the podcast. Save yourself some coin. Thezebra.com slash Theo. Okay, show me this guy's talent. Okay, here's what's... Oh. No. Ooh. No. No, don't do this. Okay, I don't know if it's a talent or just... It's not smart to do. Is that it? <laughs> That's that was it. it. 405 pounds. Yeah, well, that, what is a talent and what's not smart to do? That's a I think I, I think that that's not a talent. I think that's just like, I would imagine, listen, it's amazing that he can lift 405 pounds. The lifting is the thing. It right. is amazing that he can skateboard. I can't skateboard. Same. But combining the two, he's not skateboarding. He's standing on a skateboard to lift the the weight. So standing on the skateboard is not hard. Mm-mm. Lifting the weight, it's just stupid. That's a bad decision. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is a thin line between a bad decision and talent, right? Yeah. I mean, that they- was a bad decision. That wasn't talent. Yeah, there you go. This looks like talent right now. This could be talent. This guy, I already, see, this is where my talent radar as a judge goes on. Mm-hmm. Even before hearing him, seeing him, he's a patriot. He's... This water tower sky to the back roads we've been driving all the way out here tonight to a bunch of pickups around a bonfire. Light a guitar picking on car tires for the music and for the love. I thank the good Lord above. So here's the mama, here's the Jesus, here's the all of my party people. I actually love this. Nice song. It is a nice. He's kind of like a country Springsteen. Yeah, isn't he? But he's got this cherub face, and it looks like he's just. He's never smoked before, but right before he made this tape, he finished a pack of camels just yeah. so that he can get that phlegm. Yeah, I like this. I think it's I do good, like man. this. I don't like the angle he shot it from. Mm-mm. Let's get a close up of my nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like he's playing backup to his own nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't he put the like the the camera on a table? It reminded me of being at a forest fire or something. It reminded me of having like hot dogs with friends. Um, being at a forest fire? Do you mean a campfire? Yeah, campfire, sorry. Those things, don't mix those two things up. <laughs> okay, sorry, man. I didn't know that. Maybe where you come from. Like Let's a go small... to a forest fire. I love sitting around a forest <laughs> fire with my friends. I love sitting around a three-alarm fire with two friends and some marshmallows. A small watching... forest fire. Oh, and it's so cute when they're watching people drop from their balconies <laughs> into the, uh, what is oh, the thing man. they drop into? Um, what, what do you catch them with? 
No, oh, the, the wow. fire department. I, I've never seen those. When just they run in the movies. Like this, yeah, they run around. with that big trampoline. trampoline. Yeah, I don't know if they do. They still do that. You think? I didn't know they ever did it. I saw it in a couple of movies. I saw it in a lot of cartoons. Yeah. I have never. And I'm an, an ambulance chaser, not an, a fire truck chaser. Yeah. And I, I've never seen that at a fire where they took out that giant, you know, condom or whatever yeah, that is at IUD the... and said so, jump, <laughs> which I I want to do one. Day. Wouldn't you love uh, to jump off a few oh, stories into a giant trampoline? It's one shot, one kill. I tell you, there it is, right there, that life net. And they don't use it anymore. Is that what they're saying? It's called the life net. Let's get some intel on this, Nick. Can you take us into that? Yeah, they became obsolete in the 80s. Hmm. In the 80s? Yeah, was there a reason why? Is there... Uh, owing to their former prevalence, life nets often feature in... Uh... Now, it says uh, they, they had varying... Degr- Limitations. Go to, go up. Uh, okay. Limitations. Firefighters... Oh. I can't see it anymore. So firefighters believed that the practice height limit for successful use of the nets was about six stories. Although in, in the 1930 Chicago fire, people survived jumps from eight stories into a life net. Wow. One suffered a skull fracture and the other two had minor injuries, but they were out of a fucking burning building. Yeah. Why, so if from four to six stories, this could save lives, why do we say, because we don't care about people? If well, in the fourth floor? we can go to failures and problems right here as well. If you can zoom a little bit on that, Nick, so we can see it as well. All right. Life nets often failed to save people, and sometimes firefighters themselves were injured or killed by falling bodies. And that is, that is what I'm talking about. Well, they're saying that they 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 phased it out because the term Eugene, Oregon, express reservation, saying that the term life net was misleading, <laughs> and it should Aww. be it should only be used as a last resort. Well, it is the last yeah, resort. Come on, <laughs> if you're in a resort and the resort is on fire. The next place you want yeah. to be lying and luxuriating is in a fucking life net yeah. if the resort's if, on fire. Yeah, if you're in a burning building, a anything that is not burning is a resort. It really is. Point, it really just, is. It's just a getaway. It's just a quick <laughs> little getaway. It's a life net. Where are you going this Christmas? I'm going to be lying in my life net. Yeah. I think a lot of, I say we bring them back, man. Howie, what if we put your face on it too? So people were like, hey. Jump onto my face. Because, <laughs> yeah, jump onto my face. There you go. Right here, right here. <laughs> Saving lives every day. This guy um, looks like he's got something for us. I don't know what the talent is. He hasn't gotten out of his truck yet. Yeah. He's in his truck. It could be. What's going on, Theo and Howie? My name is Isaac Spots. I'm 21 years old. I live in Jackson, Wyoming. And this is my official audition for this past weekend's Fans Got Talent, baby. I got a little trick up my sleeve, a little magic that I think you guys might enjoy. And you don't have sleeves. Intense. Be prepared to be amazed. All right, you ready for this? Is As it? you can see, there's nothing in my hands, fellas. Literally that, nothing. I have nothing up my sleeves. It'd be hard to put something in these sleeves anyways. But check this out. Okay. Oh, he what is he doing? He take his penis off, I bet. <laughs> Explain that one, fellas. You feel me? Wow. Anyways, that's all I got for y'all. Gang, gang. Take care, fellas. Gang, gang. What's uh, up, player? So that was, uh, explain Isaac, that one. Isaac Spots, I don't know either. He had been smoking the night before. I think I can do it. Really? Yeah. Nothing up my sleeves. Uh-huh. No, I think I can. I really can. Okay. Watch this. Did you see any? Mm. Did you see any? I didn't. But I saw. I swear. I can do it. I'll do uh, it again. I'll try to do it again. There might have been like a little something. No, no, no. It's kind of, it's it's a known thing. Well, you think he had something in his hand? He put a, he inhaled something? No. The, I, no, I can do it. I'm telling okay. you. It's your lighting. Let me try one more time. All right. Oh, dang. Get in there. Get deep. Get there, baby. Get there, baby. That time I saw it. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah. Oh, dang. Oh, you're winking. Because we're going to add it in post. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really bad fucking animated piece of yeah. smoke. We got a new editor. Yeah, yeah, that's true, man. Oh, do something with this shit. <laughs> He's supposed to be awesome, man. Um, you know what? It, it, do people... Sometimes when you have magicians on the show, you go, you know what? It looks amazing, but it's all smoke and mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> and when you brought a magician on your show, 
All it is is a little bit of smoke. It didn't even bring a mirror. There's no, yeah. there's no <laughs> trick. It's just the smoke. And it's nothing. <laughs> Turns around, takes a hit off a cigarette. Yeah, no, yeah and then blows it out. <laughs> and I like, he had the most, like he was a, the, the first kid said, I want this to bring honor to my family. Yeah. The next guy legitimately sang a song from a bad angle. And this guy had the most, I thought, wait till you see this. It's great being here. Yeah. I got something for you. Let's go. You know? And it was n- My dad died in the mines. Right. It was nothing. Oh. It was nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. But Simon might have loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's is, where I go um, after this. Is Heidi still there? Yeah. God, bro. Dude, She's I hot. thought I had a chance with her one time, man. Yeah, she did the show. I really I think did. She thought you were adorable. I, I don't oh. know that you have a chance with her. How old are you, Theo? Me, I'm 41. No, you got no chance. Really? She likes her younger guys. Her 30. Oh. yeah. She likes. Uh, but at the she time, loves the children. At the time, I was 34 or 33 that we did the show. 34. Yeah, but then she was going out with the guy. She was going out with right when she was doing the show. I think he was, owned like Saturn or something. No, he was eight, eight and a half. So she, uh, oh yeah, she I got six ones. and a half. I got six <laughs> if I'm lucky, you know. No, she's uh, she is uh, she's a good friend. It's amazing. Do you follow her on Instagram? Yeah, man. She's very rarely dressed. Oh, dude, I remember one time we were sitting in the makeup chair or something, and I like t- she had come right here. I didn't know, and she had on like some type of I don't know what it was, man, but it was something. And it was probably like that last guy's shirt. And you guys, like somebody, she threw her voice or something, and I turned, oh, yeah. It was like that last guy's shirt, dude. Yeah. But the middle, but the, she had the sleeves, but not the kind of middle part. Right. It was like an inverse uh, wife beater. Yes. And I remember turning, and her chest was right there, bro. Right. I mean, all the clums, baby. You yeah, know what I'm you, saying? You were right into the, the clums weren't hiding. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were not, they were not hiding. Uh, okay. The clums were not hiding, bro. And I remember just praying that night that I would have a chance with her, and then nothing ever happened. Well, you, you should have said, do I have a chance with you? Yeah, I should have. You didn't say anything. You thought it would just unfold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Word free. Just yeah. boom, you'd be there. Enough of that seance and just Ouija boarding, you know? Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. H-E-I-D-I. You get to work. Sophia Vergara is stunning oh. in person. Yeah. As pretty as she is on television, it's crazy. And that's my job. That's where I'm going from here. Really? I'm going over to AGT right now. We got some talent you might want to take with you. We got. Uh, Does she have a, uh, a website? Does she have a, is she on Instagram, this girl? Uh, her or name's Brenda O'Connor. She didn't include any of that info. Okay, let's see. Let's see what Brenda does. Uh, she goes for three and a half minutes, so just let me know when you <laughs> She goes enough. for three and a half minutes. <laughs> Is these the things you go through before you go on a date? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she goes for three and a half minutes, so do you have time to take in a movie, take well, her out for coffee, and then you got three and a half minutes? <laughs> it sounds, she sounds right up my alley, honestly. It's a three-minute introduction. I like her. Sounds good. This is legitimate. Great. Is this an original? Is this her song or is it? She didn't include it. Yes, I, yes, I, yes, I'm willing to fight. Give me a moment to wonder. Leave me with a lifetime of speculation for of eternity. Wow, that's good. Just that's good, Nick. That's good, Nick. That's, she's really good. Here's what I would suggest for her. Mm-hmm. She should. Well, she did put it on tape, but it's funny that she put this talent on tape and sent it to this podcast yeah. instead of to H-E-T. <laughs> so I think she's got talent. She just is misdirected. I think that she needs to uh, make that tape and send it to AGT.com. A-G-T, yeah. And I'm telling you, that was really, really good. Was it her own song or you don't know? I- I'm trying to see if we can find her Instagram I don't know, but regardless, it. she's got a really good voice. She's uh, just a, a very pleasant entertainer who uh, I think would do well on AGT. Yeah, she sounds and This really- is another piece of talent. Yeah, this guy is doing some stand-up, but outside. 
stand up on, on the road. Look where he chose to <laughs> <Yeah>. do it. <laughs> Literally. Who is that is behind that, him? Is that Mick Is that Lou? Is that your friend Lou? It looks like Lou or Mick Jagger on a fence or a wall behind him. How yeah. about Charlie Watts? I know, huh? It's so sad. I, I love the Stones. That's my favorite group of all really? time. I've seen them about five times. Do you, wow. do you, who do you like in music? Who's I like favorite? Rolling Stones. I like Black Crows. I saw them a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just heartbreaking, man. I like Grateful Dead. I like John Mayer. John Mayer's funny. John Mayer is funny. Yeah. He is funny. And he, yeah, he's just a conduit yeah. of talent, man. Well, he's he's touring now with uh, Grateful Dead. Yeah. Yeah. He's remarkable. All right, let's see stand up. What up, people? This is Bonjo. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Oh, my I'm people. Croatia. Uh, this is a little stand up routine for Fans Got Talent on Theo Vaughn's This Past Weekend's podcast. Um, here we go. Got so something on his hand. Here we go. Well, back in the day, uh, I got my first kid, right? Hold, hold on. Yeah, I'm a fucking cat guy. No big deal, right? But let me let me take it back. So <laughs> there used to be these crackheads that used to always have these kittens. I don't know why they had kittens. Okay, well, I like this. This is kind of neat. This is that chopping screw stuff. No, style. when he, so those crackheads that have kittens, and then he did he slow it down because he's easing. Is that a technical problem? Oh, okay. Something happened where it extended it. Gotcha. So here I go. Okay. Well, back in the day, uh, I got <laughs> that wasn't. Kid, right? No, oh, that was not intentional. I don't know how that <clears throat> happened. I slowed it down to ten minutes. It was a three-minute video. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fucking. But when it's good, be... you want it to last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> and people are going, "Fuck, this is amazing! Crackheads with cats." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a talent, man. If and I would... love what I love about this comic already is, and I think that that's a funny thing to do outside. The right over, here. well, first of all, outside in front of nobody, but the the over explanation of a setup. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, can you imagine going to the club next yeah. time or your your next Netflix special? All right, here's what I got for you. Yeah. I got for everybody here at Netflix, <laughs> I got a comedy routine. I'm going to be coming out here in just a minute. I'm going to be doing some jokes and routines and just chatting. I might do some interaction with you, <laughs> with the audience. I think I might be doing things that you're going to find mildly amusing. There might be things that you find hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to probably close, which will be an hour from now, with my best piece. That's my drop the mic moment. I will give you a signal so you will know the drop the mic moment. The signal that I have come up that I've come up with is the mic dropping. <laughs> you will know. You will see that. Well, ladies and anyway. gentlemen, Sebastian Maniscalco. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't the best Sebastian impersonation. <laughs> All right, let's hear the cats in the crack. <laughs> the cats in the crack. Well, back in the day, uh, I got my first kitten, right? Hold, hold on. Yeah, I'm a fucking cat guy. No big deal, right? But let me, let me take it back. So there used to be these crackheads. <laughs> They used to always have these kittens. I don't know why they had kittens. They always had like 15 kittens what at a time. What did he take back? So I used to go to these guys, and they used to be my cat dealer. Because I had a stepdaughter that wanted cats, but we already had two of them. But Hang on. Stop kids. for a second. Like, yeah. I had my first kid. Mm -hmm. Then he had a stepdaughter. Crack. This is the most confusing. Yeah. It's like Downton Abbey, but in Memphis, I feel like. This is getting... <laughs> <laughs> this is getting pretty crazy, bro. And I love that he's got so many gestures. He's leaning on the wall. Yeah. I don't understand what the fuck. I don't either. I had to play him. Bun this is Bunjo. He's a longtime supporter of this past yeah. weekend. He's this He's Bunjo. been watching since the beginning. Then we love Bunjo. Yeah. Bunjo, thank you so much for <laughs> telling us this. It's a nice little soft kitten. Nice little furry piece of life in your hand. Amen, um, baby. So <laughs> she wants kittens, but we don't want to buy them for real. So we, go, we used to go to these crackheads. And rent kittens, ten dollars a day for Ooh. the kittens. So we used to rent three, so that's thirty dollars a day. Wow! Now this one time, that's math. Um, they came over and they're like, "Hey, ding, 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 knock on the door." Ding, ding, they're ding, like, ding hey, knock. Uh, ding is not knock. It's an aluminum door. <laughs> wait, wait, but ding, ding, ding is the bell. <laughs> oh, well, look, look, the door was made out of bells. Come on, Owie. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding. He did even the the knocking <laughs> gesture. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> this, this guy's great. I love Bunjo. I'm going to give him the same advice because he's got to come on AGT. Oh, yeah. Just the way he tells jokes. You know, Bunjo. Here's what I'm going to need. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to come into the theater. I want to be outside. You got a wall I can lean on yeah. sometimes, and I'm going to tell stories. Yeah, I need going. a small river in the background or a sewage canal. Just a son. furry <laughs> bundle of life. life. Yeah. Life. Should That's we keep going to a punchline? Or? If we oh, we didn't get one? Okay, keep going. Keep going. Black kitten? So we're like, all right. So, so the black kitten and a black dog. I'm like, all right, sure. 
Uh, I'm like, why? What, what's going on? They're like, uh, somebody just died because uh, they overdosed on drugs in my apartment. So the cops are there. So I got to put these guys somewhere safe. So I'm like, all right, that's no big deal. So the guy ends up going to jail for killing his fucking, his girlfriend, right? Um, and <laughs> <laughs> a little furry a bundle <laughs> of life. <laughs> and that's it. That's a, <laughs> is that it? That's not I the I mean, the story line. is, it keeps going. Okay. No, but let's keep it. But the thing is, what's great about it is it's, what, what he's using is he's using real life to yeah. make humor. And sometimes the darkest, uh, I like he goes because the guy there was a murder at another apartment no big deal like I like that he says no big deal because he doesn't want to make it heavy they're just he killed his fucking yeah. girlfriend but back to the kittens yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. we have this dog which I named oh, Blackie dog. Chan because it's a black Labrador um, we end up giving it to my brother's neighbor which he dubbed himself the whore master because he used to go to Cuba and pick up all these young girls and everybody okay, stop it right now whore okay. master, so we've gone from murder to <laughs> sex trafficking to, is this uh, Gamora? This sounds like that show Gamora. No, you're not getting the jokes. The, this is, the, this oh, is an amazing... You know what this reminds me of? Uh, something... Who did the uh, similar joke? It was... Uh, who's that girl oh. with the... Um, I know what you're talking about. Where everybody... Somebody... Uh, they told the worst joke and everybody kept telling it. It's not the one I was talking about. Aristocrats. Aristocrats. Oh, the Aristocrats. I was in that. You were? Yeah. Did you hate it? It's all right. You hated it. When, when I, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch it again. The only reason I did this episode of your podcast was to, <laughs> I wanted people to re-rent it and restream it. I was gonna I was if plugging you, that. If you'd have done it in Gizmo voice, man, I would have I would have really dug it. All right, let me hear. Get to the punchline, then I gotta go. All right. <laughs> Alarming if you think about it now. Uh, <laughs> but we ended up giving it to the whore master, and the whore master a week later, boom, the whore master wasn't a good person. He got the dog killed. Got oh. hit by a car. All right, All right. stop it right <laughs> here. Stop right here. <laughs> it just gets getting funnier and funnier. Here? This is this is your longtime supporter. I don't know why you're laughing, Theo. These are your people, no. and these are good people, Howie. No, okay? no, no. He's a good person. He's just not a great comedian. <laughs> the guy's out there, or maybe in he is. The but look in... at the crowd. He, you know what the thing is? I learned, and you did too. The, how do you come up with good comedy? We go to the clubs yeah. every night and we see how people react. Yeah. What I would say to this person is, just go inside. Yeah. Just get the first step is go inside where there's another person. I promise you, you will never tell this joke again. <laughs> Let's continue. There's got to be. He hasn't a walked line. the one guy. Look at the one guy he's still there. Where the Jake. painted head? But uh, oh. Jake we had this other cat, the black cat, and uh, I ended up keeping him. His name is Kraken. He lives with me now. He travels with me. You know, no big deal. I'm a fucking cat guy. Um, <laughs> so he ends up living with me. So I take him to this vet with my ex-girlfriend. Now, at first, I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, we're just going to get his balls snipped and snipped he dip, you oh, know? Yeah. And uh, we're getting him neutered. So we bring him to the vet. First thing I noticed, the vet's Asian. I'm like, oh, shit. How much money you want to put down that this vet is going to get him put down so he can... Have a dinner for his family. Oh my, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Now it's, it's getting edgy. Now. Um, but so I'm like, oh shit, he's probably going to put him down for some dinner, right? And then, oh, oh my God. We're in, the, we're in the waiting room, the operation room, as they say. Yeah. Uh, and he's uh, feeling say. my cat's as balls. They, but I notice he's holding on to him too long for like five minutes, and my cat starts crying. I look at my girlfriend, look at the doctor. I'm like, how the fuck doesn't anybody notice this shit? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, buddy. Uh, can't you hear my cats crying? Stop molesting them. Boom! My girlfriend socks me in the face. It was just Donna's question. This is Bonjo. Uh, this is my stand-up. I don't really do this. No, you don't. But I uh, hope you like it. Love it. Yes. Yes. You guys, you guys watch you all the Bang. time. How are you a legend? I remember I'm... you from Bobby's World. Thank you. Boom, boom. Let's boom, get boom. It, babies. Boom, gang, gang. boom. Gang, gang. Boom, right. boom, baby. Boom, boom. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Because I like that he... he Thank God he put a little caveat at the end that saying I don't really do stand up because yeah. you wouldn't know that. You would not know that. It's like this guy's been doing this for for a lifetime. Oh, I think it's amazing. He went to a place and set this up and did it. You could tell he was nervous, Bonjo putting it out there, trying material. Maybe if I just try some like uh some uh, string together a bunch of violent shit, <laughs> kittens, horrors, and maybe a little bit of racism yeah. just at the end to throw in. Don't forget the catchphrase, uh, big deal, I'm a fucking cat guy. Yeah, big deal, I'm a fucking cat, <laughs> cat guy. guy. <laughs>
I would love to be in the offices at America's Got Talent when this tape arrives. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah. Is there an AGT Uncensored that's going to come out or something? That's what I'm wondering. They tell me phenomenal stories that never make the air that, you know, people come in with their ideas and tapes like this that was amazing <laughs> it was something man it was definitely something and i'm glad that he put it on i'm glad we had a professional here to judge him for it uh one of my friends that worked at red bull for a long time told me that they would record the craziest calls that came into their 1-800 number from people on red bull and at the christmas party they would play them for everybody and oh, I, love he, I know i always wish i could have gone to that because I, I follow this thing on i think it's on tiktok where that somebody has animated all the really weird 911 calls Oh, you know, wow. Like horrible, like just bad 911. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's a great call. idea. It's really great. And people calling for the stupidest things. How much do you love TikTok? I feel like it fits you so well. Like just in the because sense. Because I'm good for 15 seconds right. and then <laughs> out. Uh, it, it, I did good. You know, I'm doing good on it. I love social media. I, I just love all kinds of social media. I just like, a, you know, a reason to get up and dance like an idiot or a reason to post a picture or to i just like just being someplace yeah not in my own head amen i just keep doing shit and that's why i'm doing this and i can't thank you enough for having me buddy yeah thank you so much man thank you for helping me uh get a job too on your show a while back and we got to work together again the next step is you coming on my podcast okay and we'll prank prank okay yeah oh you know what we'll do prank we'll Bobby. get a bunch of fucking cats all right mm. We'll get some fucking cats. Oh, yeah, I'm a fucking cat guy, you know? I am. And then, oh, it'll be great. We'll take them down the street. Hopefully, there'll be like a murder in yeah, progress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when we see that the murder is there, we'll get a dog also. Oh, boom, boom. And send that over yeah. to where the crackheads yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. I like that, man. Oh, I mean, well, listen, I got to come up with my yeah. I got to come up with my own material. <laughs> let's, don't, let's, don't, let's don't spin it all here. Yeah, some of that might be copywritten. Uh, Howie Mandel, congrats on all your lifelong success and thank you for being a great entertainer for so many people and and thanks for being my friend and thanks for coming in today thank you buddy stay healthy yeah take care of rich too man i'll try and my mind is somewhere else but when i find it i'll patch up where it's been blown now i'm just floating on the breeze and i feel i'm falling like these leaves i must be on a stone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light on Tell you my stories Shine on me And I will find a song I will sing it just for you And now I've been moving way too fast On the runaway train with a heavy load of my Once so thin that they're damn near gone, I guess.